I took 20 of Terraria's biggest creators, split them into teams, dropped them into a brand new world, and made them fight to the death. And whoever's the last one standing gets $500 to the charity of their choice, of course. There were huge names I got to participate in this tournament, like Adrian, Get Goodwo, Chaos, Chippy Gaming, and Diver Man Sam, the creator of the Thorium mod. The way the tournament was structured is that we would do four rounds with all 11 teams, and then the winners of each round would be put into a winner's game for the final prize. So it was super important for me and Mars to try and secure a win as quickly as possible and claim our spot in the winner's circle. Each team starts the game by falling into a brand new world. In these first couple seconds spawning in, it's important to get any loot as quickly as possible, as if you get jumped by another team, there's nothing you can do but roll over and cry. So me and Mars come up with a risky strategy that we were banking on. Wood is super important in PvP as you end up spending most of your time down in the mines and the underground doesn't have any good sources of wood. However, if we spent too much time on the surface, we'd miss out on getting the first looks at the underground loot. And with so many teams on one map, it was crucial to take our claim to some chests. So instead of committing to either strategy, me and Mars would split up. I would get the wood while he went underground and started looting chests. It would be a great way of getting both tasks done at once, but if any idiot with a wood bow came around, we'd be finished. So I had to get to work as quickly as possible. I finished cutting down trees, but Mars informs me that he can hear other people down there with him. With no weapons, we know that we don't really stand a chance. But it's then that Mars finds the holy grail of Terraria PvP, the Snowball Cannon. And no, that's not a joke. You see, in this PvP mod, a ton of weapons have actually been buffed or nerfed to try and make every single spawn equal. The jungle has magic weapons like the Nettle Burst and Staff of Earth, the Corruption has melee weapons like the Death Sickle and the Dark Lance, and they've all been adjusted to do around the same damage. But the Snowball Cannon might be the best weapon in the whole mod due to its auto-fire capabilities, gravity-adhering ammo, high damage, and ease of obtaining said ammo. As he picks up this gun of snow and death, I inform Mars that I have found the other team he heard before. It's Chaos and Saibon, and I see that they have picked up a snowball cannon of their own. Being scared, I retreat into a corner, but Mars starts loading snowballs into his cannon and approaches them. And if we could successfully pull this off, we would both be strapped with one of the best weapons in the game. It was time to engage. Oh my god, someone's shooting at me uh, with the snowball them, cannon! Let's fight them, let's fight them! Okay. Dude, 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 dude! Okay, okay, okay! Oh my god! Get them, get them, get them! Dude, get him, get him, get him, get him! Sick him, boy! Heal, heal. Nice! nice. Oh my god. And just like that, we had secured a firm stance with two of the game's best weapons. Though I will say the two of them were builders and literally named their team Hope We Don't Die First, and we did not even try and preserve their wishes a little bit. Regardless, alone in the snow biome now, we run around picking up as much loot as possible. The two things you're looking for at the start are silver bars to craft armor and iron ore to make a grappling hook whose crafting recipes have been simplified in this mod to only require iron bars. We pick up a good amount of loot before finding a portal. These can teleport you to literally anywhere on the map, so they're extremely risky. But we had to take the chance to not only get loot, but deny the other team's loot. We spawn into the underground jungle, and based on the lack of torches, it looks like we're the only people who have been here. We grab a bunch of resources, which allows us to make armor for both of us and a hook. We think about staying here to continue gathering loot, but then we look up at the player total. Despite it only being seven minutes in, Half of all the players have been eliminated. Scared, we grab our tails, shove them between our legs, and hop back to the snow biome. But right as we return, we can hear two different teams surrounding us from both sides, one on top and one to the right. We need to go back to the surface ASAP to escape, but it would be too dangerous if I went without a grappling hook. Being mobile is everything in this mod, and the grappling hook is huge in getting around. We risk it and spend some time mining open this iron vein, and as the block breaking slowly gets closer, we use our surface potions to retreat. On the surface, I do everything I can to craft my grappling hook as quickly as possible, and right as I'm about to, we hear someone. Slapping my keys as quickly as God will allow, I finally finish the hook before Mura falls from the sky and starts attacking us. But it looks like he has no teammates, so me and Mars' ranged gear allows us to easily fire him down from a distance while he flails his psycho knife around, adding to our third kill for this round. Mura dropped a snake charmer's flute for us, sorry buddy, which allows us to more easily get around the surface, which is perfect as we've just passed the 10 minute mark, meaning that a meteorite has landed. This leads to the second part of me and Mars' plan, meteorite armor. Remember how I said mobility is king in PvP? Well, due to the OPness of the space gun, the meteorite set bonus has instead been changed to give you the effect of the rocket boots. Being able to instantly establish high ground and being super mobile is incredibly powerful, so we knew we had to try and search for it, despite the risk the surface might bring. And after just a couple minutes, we find it. We quickly bomb the crap out of the meteor and start upgrading our silver armor to meteorite, but me and Mars are both extremely nervous. Cool. And you just made a ch uh, you made a helmet for yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, pogs. I myself, I made myself a head place and a thing, but now we don't have enough for any greaves. I'll it's better for one of us to have the bonus set. I'll give you my chest then. We quickly continue looting and we manage to find some good melee weapons and enough life crystals to put me at full health. It's then that the barrier starts expanding. Similar to Fortnite, this mod adds a barrier that expands every couple minutes and deals catastrophic damage to anyone who stays stuck in it. Being somewhat close to the barrier, we hear the leagues of people start approaching us from the right. First, we have Terrasteel, whose partner Murrah we actually killed way back in the snow biome, which I don't know how they got that separated, but I digress. We use our snowball cannons to push him into the storm and kill him. I try to grab his stuff, but the storm quickly starts weakening me, so I bail on the idea. But the fight isn't over yet, because right as we finish off Terra Steel, Chippy falls down from the sky on us. Chippy was a huge inspiration for nearly everyone at the event. Me, personally, I've been watching him since I was just 14 years old. So it was an absolute honor to brutally tear him apart with our snowball cannons. I always dreamed we'd meet like this. Luckily, the barrier stops right before Chippy's loot, allowing us to loot his stuff, making us even more equipped to take on the seven players that remain. Feeling extremely prepared, we decide to head into the center. But on our way, we're approached by Phantasm and CJ Deathbot, and they've got frost and shadow armor, making their ranged and physical attacks hit way harder than ours. Mars has meteor armor, but with my regular silver, things are not looking good. But for some reason, their health is looking low, while ours is completely full. We continue fighting them until they've built a wall to try and keep us away. It's then we see why they were so scared as Get Good comes from behind and finishes off Phantasm and CJ as they lay trapped behind their own wall. We follow Get Good for a while, but he's too quick, so we decide to head back and sort through all the loot that CJ and Phantasm had dropped. This gets me full frost armor, which only further increases the damage of my snowball cannon. We also grab some ranger emblems and some more movement accessories. We're about as prepared as we possibly can be for this final fight. And with only three teams left in the game, our spirits are in insanely high. This could be our chance, a win on the very first round. The barrier closes in and we head towards the center, where we see someone has created some sort of weird structure in the middle of the map. Both seem to be alone, as when we approach, they quickly scatter, with one retreating up high and the other going down into a cave. The barrier is extremely small now, so there's nowhere for anyone to go. There's no more hiding anymore. And with full gear and weapons, we are the menaces to beat. They have to approach us. I start setting up an arena to prep for everyone coming, when all of a sudden, a boulder comes falling down from the sky. We thought they'd have to approach us, but instead, they have the high ground. It's over. We've lost. The storm starts closing in and Diverman Sam is killed above us by Purple Hair Guy's Death Sickle. He has one of the strongest weapons in the entire game, but we have the range. All of a sudden, Adrian falls down from the sky and pushes me into the storm. We trapped him as me and Mars gun him down from both directions, perpetually knocking him back and forth. I managed to finish him off and get out of the storm, but I'm severely wounded. Four players remain in the game, us, Purple Hair Guy, and Get Good Woe, making us the only team left and we're already where the storm is gonna close in on. We've re-established dominance. We're destined to win. This is my perfect victory. Get Good comes up from the ground and targets me while Mars is attacked by Purple up in the sky. Our numbers advantage is our only resource, so Mars falls down and helps me finish off Get Good. And with that, it's just us and Purple remain. You're surrounded, Purple. It's over, my friend. He's up in the sky and Mars decides to approach him with his rocket boots. I'm unable to help as it's way too far up, so I'm forced to watch as Purple uses the death sickle to massacre my team from afar. He survives with one HP and follows Mars into the retreat. Purple gets stuck in a hole as I rain snowballs down on him. Mars builds up to try and regain his health. But what Mars didn't realize is that he wasn't building a wall. He was building our tomb. As I try to protect Mars, Purple comes up from the hole and slices my teammate's head off and pushes me to the other side of the wall. Now it's just me and Purple Hair Guy alone, and I'm at the disadvantage. You see, I am both on the side of the storm and trapped behind this wall, and Purple has the only weapon that can go through walls. This traps me on my side, making me stuck in my exact position as he spams testicles through the wall. I have to approach. It's my only hope of winning. As I grapple up through the wall, Purple's able to weaken me, and when I try to get over to him, I only get pushed back more by the sickle. I fire snowballs as best as I can, but I'm pushed back into the storm, and eventually... No! <laughs> we had it! The final two, and the only team left! Victory robbed from us moments before! We had everything going for us to win. The perfect spawn, incredible armor, great weapons, and yet, we still lost. This was our chance to secure our spot, and we just couldn't. We just 
weren't working good as a team. We're feeling absolutely crushed, but now we know we're actually good enough to perform in this tourney, and we could very well take a win. We spawn into the second round, and this time we had a secret weapon. Why'd you make your character yellow? I'm piss boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> With the power of piss on our side, we land into the new world with confidence. This time, we spawn in the jungle biome, which is honestly pretty bad. The jungle biome is themed around magic weapons in this mod, and magic is not good in PvP. Since there's no real way to restore your mana, you can only fire off a couple shots before running out. Also, the enemies of the jungle are generally the hardest, so it makes gearing up take all the much longer. Regardless, as we get down to spawn, we're immediately approached, but since we have nothing and they have nothing, it's more just like flailing around, so we decide to back off. We jump down into a cave before quickly being approached by Thurm, who's already looted a magic dagger. And while most mana weapons are pretty bad, the magic dagger uses such few mana and is able to fire so quickly that he ends up doing tons of damage to us. We're absolutely defenseless, so we're forced to retreat. Though as we retreat, it looks like Thurm and Charlie got separated, and Charlie starts trying to corner Mars. But Charlie is still pretty new to this game, so Mars is easily able to shred through her with a harpoon he found. We're still defenseless, but at least now we know that Thurm is all alone. Well, I should say defenseless, other than our harpoons! Harpoon to vic- Oh, I gotta wait to reel it back in now. We loot out a couple more supplies, and I start building all of our crafting stations, when suddenly, magic daggers start raining down upon us from the sky. We build a wall to push Thurm back, and watch him run away. Mars goes to grab a nearby chest, while I make some armor and a hook to give Mars the upper hand. But while I was crafting, Thurm has come around to the other side and cornered us. In the nick of time, Mars creates a wall on the adjacent side, saving our skin. Give Mars his armor, and that immediately fills him with a huge bout of confidence. I left my- Wait, it, No, 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 we're not gonna call away from- just because of Thurm. Yeah, you're right, it's Thurm. It's one person! This. Mars continues to engage Thurm while I stay stuck in a hole, as I gave the grappling hook to Mars. This is very embarrassing for me. But after a bit of fighting, we remember that Thurm's weapon is still based in mana, meaning that he will eventually run out. Mars is low, but Thurm stops firing, which I know means he's all out. I dive in and harpoon him. I get him with one hit left as he starts attacking a bee. If he's able to kill this thing, it will drop a mana star, recharging him and giving him the mana to kill us, so we're forced to approach. I throw some bombs at him, but I'm too late. He's killed the bee and is gunning for the star. So Mars shoots down the hole and lands the finishing blow and kills Thurm seconds before he can grab the star. We loot Thurm's corpse and get a bunch of good loot off of him, letting us finish out my arm and give Mars a stellar weapon. We jump through the portal and try and finish out Mars' set, but we're quickly ambushed and they have lots of good weapons, and all we have is one dagger. We jump back through the portal and surface, hoping they leave us alone, but now we're on the surface and completely defenseless, with nearly the entire jungle already being looted. We needed a miracle. Oh, the meteor! Whoa, whoa, shut, shut, shut! What, what? The meteor's right here! Really? We're able to mine out the entire meteor, but as I go to place down our crafting stations, we're quickly ambushed. And since I haven't had a single second to breathe, I have no grappling hook trapping me in this hole. I'm forced to surface and retreat as we run away, but we're quickly cornered again by Necro, who has full mage armor. We sprint in the other direction, and we're finally free. We take the time to craft Mars some meteor armor, but in return, I have no leggings. We're able to craft some subpar weapons, but we're still looking pretty unequipped and I have no help. If we're gonna kill this, we need to kill someone. Luckily, we hear Necro to our right and decide that this time we needed to ambush him. We might end up dying, but we have no other choice here. Wait, wait, wait for me, wait for me before you go up there. They're the, they're the ones who ran. Oh, sh okay. He, he did not come to around. I made, I made him miss his hook. Oh, he's so low. Get him, John. I don't have any mana! Shot. One hit, one hit, one hit! Nice! nice. Oh. We defeat Necro and loot his corpse, giving Mars some sick chain guillotines, and myself full mage armor. We surface, but Chibi and Adrian are there waiting for us. In fear, we build high into the sky, finally feeling safe as we try and rain hell down upon them. But just as we're starting to feel safe... Hey, oh my god! Ow, 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 ow. We gotta get- oh my god, we're getting messed up, man. Oh my god, we got eviscerated! Go, Mars, go, go, go! No! Oh my god, they messed us up. Yeah, we got demolished there. 
Using the service potion to attack us from above made us stand no chance at all. After killing us, Purple Guy and Failure go on to win their second match. Now the pressure was really on. In the third round, we just get absolutely rolled. We spawn near the middle of the world in a regular biome, gear up to silver armor, and get a bunch of meh weapons. While looking for some good weapons in another biome, we get jumped by CJ Deathbot and Phantasm and die. Even though we weren't alive, this round did end in a pretty incredible way that I just want to call out. The storm expands and everyone is pushed into the center of the map. After a couple of fights in the middle, three people remain, all of them solo. Necro, CJ Deathbot, and Terra Steel. All of them having lost their partner, trying desperately to secure the win. Necro stays up high position on a rope, just throwing bombs down, as both CJ and Terra try to knock him down. However, Terra decides to finish off the weakened CJ instead, landing the blow with his Hellwing. Then, it's a standoff. Necro has the higher ground, but he just ran out of bombs, and Terra has the more powerful weapon. It could go either way, and after sustaining some damage, Necro jumps down to finish off Terra Steel. Moments away from death, Terra backs off behind a wall and reveals that he has the Nettle Burst, the other weapon with the ability to go through walls, making any advances Necro makes invalid. The two shoot each other for a while until the storm has encapsulated the entire map. Knowing that he has the health advantage, Necro boxes himself in and waits for the storm to take out Terra Steel. Truly in insane finish. But with that over, we're on to the final round, our last chance at qualifying for the winner's bracket. And after a really good round one, me and Mars have been slowly doing worse and worse, failing to adapt to the ever-changing meta. This was our last chance to prove ourselves. Me and Mars talked between rounds and decided that no matter what, we had to get to the snow biome. Ranged was the best way to play, so instead of looting wherever we spawned, we were gonna make it our goal to get to the snow biome and get gear before others. Repeating that first round was the only way to win. We had to give our absolute best performance now. Our last chance. We spawn into the world, nervous as ever, and... But we need oh my god. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> let it go down! Let it go! This is our time! This is our go time! Go. This is our moment, Mars! We know at this point we've been gifted a golden opportunity, and we can't bungle it. The tension is palpable, as both me and Mars get insanely antsy. This is our last shot to the top. We quickly find chests to secure snowball cannons and rager emblems for both of us. We decide to commit to full range and farm out the frost armor here to increase our range damage. In order to craft the frost armor for both of us, we need six frost cores, which each have a somewhat low drop chance from the snow biome enemies. To get the six we needed, we would need to spend a while in the snow biome just farming for cores. But we decide the extra range damage is gonna be just that important, so we should stay here and commit, even if it means we get less overall loot. We get enough silver for two Two armor sets, enough iron for grappling hooks, and enough hearts to get us almost to full health. Unfortunately, we see that Chippy and Adrian have been looting the right half of the snow biome already, and then teleport to the surface before we're able to kill them, meaning that a good chunk of the loot that we needed has already been taken. I managed to get a third frost core though, and we're able to make Mars a full set of frost armor. Now, all that was left was to try and find the last three frost cores for my armor, and after another five minutes of grinding, we managed to pick them up. Now, we're absolutely set. And after a quick spout with Chippy and Adrian, they surface and start dropping bombs on us, so we decide to jump into a portal. We end up in the desert biome and pick up some obsidian skulls for further defensive buffs. After reaching a dead end in the desert, as the storm slowly moves towards us, we decide we have to go to the surface. We've been dreading going, because despite the remaining worlds being extremely small, there are still more than half the players left in the game meaning that the service is bound to be overrun with players. We were really well prepared, but so was everyone else, and we'd have to shred through each and every single one of them if we wanted to secure that win. With the storm expanding, we cock our snowball cannons and head to the surface. This proves to immediately be a mistake, as Mars gets jumped, and my lack of double jump means that I'm unable to follow, splitting him in the air and me on the ground. Mars is able to narrowly escape, but our attackers are in hot pursuit, so we decide to head to the middle of the world and then build up. We see the points where other people had started building up, but we know better than them. The meta now was all about air combat, so we were going to take a lesson out of my depressed freshman year of college and get as high as we possibly could. That's right, we built all the way to the space layer where no one can find a- and we are immediately jumped. Adrian and Chippy managed to catch us, and they had also looted the snow biome, meaning that they have snowball cannons of their own, making them truly scary adversaries. After exchanging snowballs for a bit, somehow me and Mars managed to damage the two of them enough that they have to retreat to heal. This gives us time to get back to our rope and continue building the space bridge while they waited to heal. I tried to build a campfire to regen health, and uh... I have no wood. <gasps> what the hell? Oh, no! Crap. Sean! Sean! Come back, come back, come back! Run away! 
Yeah, I accidentally took my last surface potion, not realizing that it was in my inventory slot. Luckily, I'm able to immediately get back up, but my little mistake gives away our position as the last round's winner, Necro, follows us up our rope. We manage to block him out, but he's still under us. Below us, people are dropping like flies. Weakened from the fight with me and Mars, Chippy and Adrian are ambushed by CJ and Phantasm. A brawl that results in Adrian, CJ, and Phantasm dying, leaving Chippy as the final survivor. Back to us on top, and we've managed to box Necro out. But then he pulls out 10,000 buckets of lava hitting us through the platform, and we start dancing around to try not to get hit. Our mobility is extremely limited now, as we have only this little area to move around on, and Necro breaks a hole in our bridge. Mars is getting extremely low, and right as Necro is about to rain hell upon us, he misses his grapple. A mistake that would send him all the way down to the surface. But just when we think we're rid of him, Necro pulls out a Snake Charmer's Flute and gets right back to our bridge, and he pulls out another bucket of lava! How many does this guy have?! After pushing him off, we're at a bit of a standstill, until Chippy comes back out of nowhere and starts putting pressure onto Necro. But then, disaster strikes, and the barrier begins progressing for the first time down from the sky. Now what follows is a truly insane two minutes, since there are still seven players left and we're all being pushed into one tiny arena in the center of the world. So try and stay with me here. Firstly, Chippy attempts to engage Necro with his death signal, but the sand gun rains hell upon him. In an attempt to escape, Chippy uses a surface potion. This ends up being a huge mistake as the storm quickly finished him off mid-brawl with Necro. Necro is now way up high in the sky and tries his best to fall quickly down to the surface. However, me and Mars have beaten him to the punch and we're able to keep him stunned locked in the air with our snowball cannons, suspending him in the storm, finishing Necro off. I get low from the sand that Necro's fallen down from the sky, but I managed to pick up Chippy's death sickle. I learned from my mistakes of the past, and I won't have a repeat of last time. And the sickle becomes immediately useful as Murr approaches us from under the bridge, throwing the toxic flask and doing huge damage to both of us. I'm extremely low and my potions are on cooldown, but we have no choice but to engage in the brawl that's happening down on the surface. This is the final fight. All five of us, right here. Luckily, me and Mars were able to spawn on the right side of this wall, giving us some minor protection. With my new sickle, Mars is able to fire snowballs at everyone from above while I attack on the ground with my sickle. Mura weakens purple hair guy for us, and Mars is able to shoot him down with a snowball for the finishing blow. Now we're the last team left. Murr quickly then ends Failure with a toxic flask throw, with Mars threading another snowball to eliminate him. Now it's just us versus Murr, an exact repeat of what happened in the first round, and I won't let history repeat itself. Instead of hiding behind the wall like I did last time, this time I'm putting destiny into my own hands. I go to approach him and... Yes! 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 We had done it. Somehow, some way, we secured our victory in a room of some of the best rare players of all time. We were elated on complete cloud nine. Our strategy was perfectly executed and it resulted in victory for us. The celebration was cut short as we realized we're not done yet. Now it was time to go into the winner's bracket. The four winners of each round squaring off in one showdown to prove who was the strongest Terraria PvP player. Me and Mars were feeling super confident. We had made it into the top two, two out of the four rounds, and we knew both Necro and Purple Hair Guy's strategies now. But the last pick was a bit of an oddball. You see, Purple Hair Guy and Failure had actually won two out of the four rounds. So instead of just going in with three teams, I decided that I would give their team the option to bring in whoever they wanted as the last contestant. Failure and Purple Hair Guy, have you guys decided on the last team you want in the finals? Would it be breaking yeah. the rules if we had Habu play the final? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. <laughs> it would absolutely be breaking the rules. I would absolutely be doing that. It's, hey. it's Team Thorium. That's it. Welcome. Ooh. Whoa. GG, boys. With the combatants finalized, it was time to head into the last round. Our chance to claim the throne. In order to secure this win, we needed a good spawn. We spawn in and... Oh, my God. Oh! You get the chest and I will get these trees. Okay, go, 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 wood, go, 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 wood. We happen to get a Sky Island, which gives Mars a balloon, which will help a ton with his mobility. We get down to the surface and realize that we spawned in on just the normal surface biome, which is really bad. With so many powerful biomes in the world, like Corruption, Crimson, Snow, and Desert, getting a standard spawn is practically a death sentence. We start looking to our right and realize that the jungle is the closest biome, which is also really bad. This is probably our worst spawn in all five games. We decide to play it safe and go 
down to the standard biome to try and get anything to prepare us for our journey to look for another biome. We get some basic armor, but the weapons here are extremely disappointing. We decide to surface, take some mobility potions, and then speed to another biome. It's then that we happen upon the desert biome. All of the desert gear is focused around mobility, which like I said before, is king in a mod like this. They also have a guaranteed spawn in the sand gun, which is like the snowball canning, but just a little bit worse. Or at least that's what we thought at the time. The desert biome gets its armor and gear from mining tons of desert fossil. Seriously, you need 225 fossil per set of armor, meaning that if we're gonna get two sets of armor plus some weapons, we need nearly 600 desert fossils. So we've got a lot of grinding to do. Luckily, we know that everyone's doing nearly the same, so we don't have to rush too much. In the meantime, our opponents, Necro and Bajou, have gotten full frost armor, and the two-time champs, Purple Hair Guy and Failer, have gotten corruption, crimson, and snowdrops. And Diverman Sam and Uncle Danny have half mage armor. So at least we're not in the worst position. We finish off our desert armor and we get some sand for our sand gun. And with that, we see if we can get any last minute boons to quickly finish out our build. Luckily, we find the meteorite completely untouched. We mine it before being chased off, but manage to craft two hellwing bows. Meanwhile, all the other teams have gotten all the way up into the sky. In fact, Necro and Vizio have gotten the idea to get to the exact center of spawn and start spamming as much lava as they can down there. Now, this will be extremely important. So remember that they drop all that lava, but they weren't at the top of the world. After putzing about for a bit more, we decide to finally join all the other teams in the sky. We build up to the world limit and start making a bridge. We bridge over to the middle of the world and finally see someone. <gasps> oh my god! Hey, 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 uh, we built uh, no, high, no, no, but no. they built higher! And not only do Purple Hair Guy and Failure have the terrain advantage, but they also have snowball cannons, putting us severely behind. And right below them is Necro and Bajo, who have made a fortress of spike balls. Oh yeah, and then the Thorium devs are sitting over here in this tiny box. Just, like, waiting, I guess. And then, finally, the barrier starts coming down from the sky, pushing us all down to the surface. Me and Mars take our service potions and head to the left. Meanwhile, Purple Hair Guy and Failure take huge damage from Necro's Fortress. They make it down to the surface, but Necro can shoot Frost Daggerfish down on them from above. And that takes out Failure. Meanwhile, we've fallen down onto the dev team who hit us with the Magic Staff of Earth, which does 90 damage! Dear Lord! They knock us off from the top and we start falling down. Back over to Necro and he's pushed Purple Hair Guy into the lava, successfully taking him out. I'm separated from Mars and all the chaos and try and finish off Necro, but Bajo comes in and starts shooting me with a snowball cannon. Oh, I'm done. And just like that, I fall victim to the lava myself. The repeated knockback of the snowball cannon was just too overwhelming. But Mars is still alive, and if he managed to clutch this, we could still win! Yeah. We were stuck between two teams and forced to take the onslaught from both sides. We didn't stand a chance. So no, we did not win the tournament. It was robbed from us at the very last second because of some lava. But who did win? Well, the Thorium devs sit up in their house at nearly full health, but they definitely have the worst gear. Meanwhile, Necro and Bajou are stuck on the ground, but they have much better weapons. Necro and Bajou haven't won nearly two games, and then the Thorium devs haven't won a single one. So it's looking terrible for Sam and Danny. But then... Necro is pushing forward. It's a 2v1. The devs versus... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's a 2v2. Miju is still there. Necro is pushing up against the double Earth Staff. He is getting absolutely shredded. The spiky ball doesn't finish him off. Oh, no, the arrow does. Uncle Danny, they look like they're going to win this. The team that was picked in last, they didn't even run around. They're just going to fire. They have the high ground. A little bit of a dig. There's no way. The storm, they're going to push together. They're... Oh, it's over. Oh, the Thorn Staff, it is over. There's no way that they won that. Through a truly insane battle, the team that hasn't even won a round comes out on top, and they had probably the worst year in Mage. A truly insane and well-deserved victory. And even though we didn't win, I am truly honored that two devs as influential as the ones behind the Thorium were the winners of my event. This was probably my favorite event I've ever hosted. It was high pressure, intense, and just a whole lot of fun. Let me know in the comments what tournament you'd like to see hosted in Terraria next, or maybe in another game. Make sure to check out everyone who was kind enough to participate in the description down below, and I'll see you all next time.